In this lesson, we'll introduce two complementary methods, keys and values, for iterating over either a dictionary's keys or values one element at a time. Both methods return an iterable dictionary view object, much like the items method. So let's say I have a dictionary here. I'll call it cryptocurrency prices. In this dictionary, my keys will be a variety of cryptocurrencies and my values will be a sample of prices. So we have Bitcoin, and let's say the price of Bitcoin today is 400,000. Unfortunately, this has not happened yet. Then we also have Ethereum. Let's say that's price is 7,000. Let's say finally our key is gonna be Litecoin and its price will be 10. Okay, so how can I get an object that represents all of the keys within this cryptocurrency prices dictionary? So what I'm gonna do here is invoke print, take my cryptocurrency prices dictionary and invoke the keys method. Again, it's a method, so we need to wrap the pair of parentheses at the very end. When I execute this, we're going to get this dict keys object here, and we can see here something that resembles a list of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Now, it's very important to note that this is not a list. I can prove this by passing this return value into Python's built-in type function, which will tell us that it's actually an object made from a different class called dict keys. The same rules apply, of course, if I call the complementary values method here, if I do values, and here, if I do values as well, execute this, we're going to get this dict values uh, object that is made from the dict values class. Again, a class is just a blueprint or a template from which an object is constructed. But the more important thing to note here is that the values that we're getting back here are not lists. They are separate iterable Python objects. Now, if you wanted to convert these objects to lists, you certainly could by passing them into Python's built-in list function, but there's really no reason to do that for the purposes of iteration because these objects are already iterable and we can use them uh, for the purposes of iteration. So what I can do here is just comment out this code. And if I just wanted to iterate over all of my cryptocurrencies, I can do something like this. For each currency in cryptocurrency prices and then invoke the keys method. So this is going to give us back this iterable object that represents or holds all of the keys within my dictionary. And this is of course going to be the variable that represents each one. So this is going to be a very similar syntax to simply doing cryptocurrency prices without invoking a method on it. The reason I like this one a little bit more is because it's a little bit more explicit. Somebody reading this code can instantly remember that when you're iterating over this, you're iterating over the keys. You're giving them a little bit of a visual indicator. In comparison, if you just do something like this, you're telling them you're iterating over a dictionary, but then they have to know more about the specifics of Python and know that you're iterating over the keys instead of the values or instead of both. So that's why I prefer this syntax. Then of course we can use that variable of currency or, or whatever name we give it within the body or block that we pass to the for loop. So we can do something like the next currency is currency. And when I execute this code, we're gonna get those sentences. The next currency is Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. The exact same uh, logic applies if we're using the values method. In that case, I'm going to be iterating over a bunch of numeric prices. So I can write for each price, in my cryptocurrency prices dictionaries values, we can print the next price is price. Again, the variable names are up to us. This doesn't have to be currency. This doesn't have to be price. The reason though uh, it is beneficial here is because it describes what it is that we're iterating over. And the reason this is beneficial is because these methods grant a little bit more clarity about what it is that we are dealing with. Again, as a refresher, what we're getting back from the keys and values methods are not lists. They are dictionary view objects. However, they support similar functionalities like len as well as in. So you don't need to convert these objects to lists to get all the benefits. For example, what if I want to check if a key is found within the keys of my cryptocurrency prices uh, dictionary? Of course, I can simply use the in keyword like is Bitcoin in cryptocurrency prices, but of course that is giving an entire dictionary and you have to know that we're checking within the keys. You can also do this, is Bitcoin in my cryptocurrency prices dictionaries keys? And that you can argue lends a little bit more clarity and explanation to the code. It describes what we're looking for. So of course this is going to be true. And if I give a key that does not exist such as Ripple, then we're going to get a false. The exact same logic applies when we're dealing with the values method. So let me go ahead and copy this line replace this with values. Let's say we look for the value of 400,000 within my values of my dictionary. 400,000 exists, it is the value for the key of Bitcoin, so we're gonna get true. 
And if I instead look for something like 5,000, we're going to get a false on the right-hand side. As I mentioned as well, the len function can accept a dictionary view object as an argument. So for example, I can find out the length of cryptocurrency prices keys or how many total keys there are by passing that iterable object into len. We're going to get a value of three. Of course, if I provide the input of the return value of the values method, we're gonna get the exact same result because keys are intrinsically tied to values. So we can't have more or less keys or values. We have to have the same amount within a dictionary. And of course, if we pass just the entire dictionary object itself, the len function will give us the total amount of key value pairs inside there, which is three. So it doesn't matter which one we use, it's just the exact same result. We're either asking for the total number of keys, the total number of values, or the total number of key value pairs in a dictionary, which must all be the same. And that's really all there is to cover in this lesson. This is just an alternate way that we can iterate over just the keys or just the values in a dictionary. We invoke the keys or values methods. They give us back a different type of object called a dictionary view object. It is not a list, but it is list-like, which means you can do very similar operations to it. You can iterate over it with a for loop. You can find out if a value is contained within it, and you can ask it for its length along with a variety of other different operations, which you can play along with uh, in your free time. That's all there is to cover in this lesson. So I will see you in the next one.